What's happening, guys? Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So, not too much to go over news-wise this week. I um, just want to say, if you guys haven't checked out my Impact Review from this past Thursday, you can click the link above my head and check that out. Um, so, the Redemption pay-per-view is less than two months away. Impact has said that they should have VIP packages available tomorrow, February 26th, on their website. I believe this will also include the set of tapings, which... This set of taping should take us all the way to Slammiversary in, on July 15th. Um, and the next set of taping should be interesting as Impact will have 12 weeks worth, worth of surveys to kind of be at their disposal and make some changes to the show. And we'll see if, uh, if these surveys are really doing anything. So it was also announced this past week that Impact's next Twitch event will be called The Last Chancery. Um, in the main event, it will feature Austin Aries versus Congo Kong versus Matt Seidel. Uh, the event will be taped next Sunday, March 4th, and air Friday, March 9th. Uh, also on the card is Moose versus Alberto El Patron, Trevor Lee versus Josh Alexander, and Casey Spinelli versus Ali. So there was an article this past week on metro.co.uk that is titled, Bound for What? Meet the three men trying to save Impact Wrestling. So basically, uh, I'll give you guys a little highlights of what was talked about in the article, and you guys can check it out. I'll leave a link down below in the comments. Uh, basically, they went over reasons to care about Impact Wrestling, uh, talent departures, the departure of Jeremy Borash, uh, Josh Matthews, the commentary team, uh, contracts, losing the Spike TV Destination America deal, the Rey Mysterio rumors, and amongst other things. Um, one thing I did want to talk about is um, Impact, or how they discussed letting talent be able to retain the rights of their character. Um, this was what, what was said. It was asked to Ed Nordholm. He said, Ed, the news that you won't be keeping the trademarks and characters of your talent is a potential game changer. How hard was that to implement? Ed responded, not that hard. I came in, I'm new to the business, trying to understand the roster and what we do, how we market them and how they work. I started seeing Rosemary, a wonderful talent, wonderful gimmick, great gal, and I find out that she doesn't market herself as Rosemary when, not in it, or when she's not doing impact. This makes no sense to me. I want Rosemary to be marketing that name everywhere. I started pulling back and realized she's not because she's not going to be Rosemary the day after she's not here anymore. So, of course, she wants another identity that's e that she's equally pushing as well. Um, yeah, this is a pretty big deal. Um, I, if he talks about this and the Hardys and the whole debacle that happened with them, but this really was what opened his eyes to allowing them to use or retain the rights to their character. Um, if Ed is truly serious about this and with his praise to Rosemary... I definitely think they need to turn the volume up on the Rosemary character um, instead of falling into, you know, bad habits with bringing in new talent and showcasing them or being like other companies that have a narrative to push a specific character. Um, but she is over with the crowd, good on promos, good in the ring. People dress up to the shows in her character. Um, it's great on social media, always in character. I, I really, like I said, I think they need to turn the volume up on her character and kind of let her do her thing and be a big spotlight for Impact. You know, maybe even as much as the Broken Hardy gimmick was, just because the fans love it. You already have her well established in the company. There's not much else to do. Just let her do her thing. Um, so this past week's Impact drew 262,000 viewers, which is a pretty significant drop from last week's 300,000 viewers, uh, and ranked 136 on Cable's Top 150. Uh, this will be the last week that Impact will be going head-to-head -head with the Winter Olympics. Uh, I also don't think it helped that you are your main event is spotlighting characters that are no longer with the company, so I think that might have been a turnoff to some people. Um, but hopefully things turn around uh we have crossroads in two weeks and usually their uh weekly or their their impact specials do pretty well in the ratings so hopefully the build next week to that event will help as well 
So last but not least, this week's media call featured Josh Matthews and Jimmy Jacobs. Here are some of the highlights from it. Uh, Josh Matthews talked about the UK time slot jumping around. I think it went from Friday night 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. and now to 11 p.m. Uh, talks about hoping to do a UK tour in the future. Gives a little bit of an injury update on Rosemary. He said that he heard she's banged up but is hopeful that she's good to go at redemption. And then he praised Sonjay's commentary work. Then we got Jimmy Jacobs on the call, and he comes in and talks about how 2018 is being a rebuilding year for Impact Wrestling, uh, how he was so restricted in WWE, and how he now has the freedom to grow where, where and how he wants to. He said he feels valued by Impact Wrestling. It's a completely different environment. Um, and then he brings up, uh, while Impact taping 12 weeks at a time is good for story for telling long-term stories, it is overwhelming creatively, creatively and work-wise, and he thinks taping three to six episodes at a time would be ideal. Um, this was also brought up in the interview uh, about the article I talked about previously uh, with Scott Demore, Ed Nordholm, and Don Callis. Um, I definitely think they should kind of tape maybe a month's worth of tapings at a time or three weeks like he brings up and have your impact special be lived or, you know, on a delay just because you kind of bring people in to watch that live show. Um, I mean, you're building everything in the previous weeks, but then having the live show happen, I definitely you'll will see a significant uh, increase in viewers because I'm sure most people just read the spoilers and then they're like, oh, whatever, I won't tune in. I'll just wait till the pay-per-view happens when something actually happens live. Um, he also brings up his history with Congo Kong, how they've known each other for about 20 years, and how WWE dropped the ball with Austin Aries. Uh, he said that them using him as a babyface was definitely not the right way to go. And then he talks about how, well, Austin Aries is a babyface right now in the company and that we don't know what the future will hold with that. Um, but like I said, this is just some of the highlights from the uh, media call. Definitely worth checking out. I believe the Impact Lounge recently uploaded it, so you can guy, you guys can go check it out there. I actually listened to it on uh, SoundCloud. Uh, WrestleZone had uploaded it there. But that is all I have for you guys this week. Like I said, not too much to go over news-wise. Um, yeah. So until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.